So we're going to go back to this topic of sensitive data. It's my pleasure to introduce Vita Lichtfart, who is Support and Training Officer at the UK Data Service. She'll be telling us about the five SAFE framework for accessing sensitive data via the UK Data Service um, Secure Lab. So thank you very much, uh, Vita. The floor is yours. And we can see all, see your slides fine. You're ready to go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, my name is Beate Lichter. I'm from the UK Data Service. And I'm very happy to introduce the five, same, uh, five safes framework to you, which basically enables remote access to sensitive data via the UK Data Service Secure Lab. So the roadmap for my talk today will be as follows. I will first give a very brief overview um, of our sensitive control data that we hold as UK Data Service and also the other data that we hold, but very, very briefly, just in case you're not aware. I will then explain the five saves, the framework that gives uh, us the opportunity to provide data access safely. And finally, um, conclude with some remarks about the UK Data Service Secure Lab, um, where we provide for 10 years now, remote access to control data. Now, the data at the UK Data Service, we hold approximately 8,500 uh, studies in our data catalog, uh, out of which 980 are open data sets, 7,186 are safeguarded data, and 237 are controlled data sets. Now, the controlled data sets are the ones that are especially interesting for my talk today. And we distinguish here between secure lab data, which are remote access data sets, and secure lab data, which are safe room only uh, access data sets. And the latter are only 49, but we have 188, which you can access remotely uh, from your institution. Now, the kind of data we hold at the UK Data Service are mainly UK surveys, which are large-scale government-funded surveys, longitudinal data, which um, um, Karen and Danielle have just introduced, for example, so the, the major birth cohort studies at the CLS, for example, or understanding society data. Um, so these are major UK surveys following individuals over time. We have international macro and micro data, so aggregate data banks, and uh, micro data, survey data. We have qualitative data. So this is a range of uh, multimedia qualitative and mixed methods data. We hold census data, business micro data, administrative data. And I'm also very pleased to say that we are making um, international control data available via our safe room. And these are secure data from uh, Germany, from the IRB, um, for the Institute for employment research in Nuremberg, and also from France, from the CASD. I will talk about it a little bit later. Now, I have already introduced our access levels, open, safeguarded, and controlled, but just to explain what that means. When you have a look at the left-hand side of the table, you see the access conditions attached to the access level. So open is quite clear, it's open license, but safeguarded, here we um, summarize end user license, special conditions, and special license data sets. And you need to register with us and you need to provide a little bit of information and also for special license, uh, have a small application process in order to access the data. But these you can download to your desktop and you can work on the data. This is very different to control data or secure lab data, which you cannot download. You can only access remotely. And as I said before, we have the distinction remote access from your institution or safe from only access. However, in any case, you need to be authenticated, you need to be accredited, you need to be an approved researcher, and you need to undergo safe researcher training. You need to also pass a test for that um, before you are actually given your login and you can start working on the data. Um, an example for a secure lab data sets, I have actually picked here the Millennium Cohort Survey. Um, which fits in quite nicely with what we just heard before. And just to illustrate and give you a flavor of what sort of data sets these are, when you look at uh, um, study number 8714 here, for example, you see that it's a Millennium Cohort Study, Linked Health Administrative Data, Scottish Medical Records, Outpatient Attendance 2001 to 2015, Secure Access Data Set, or another one would be, for example, um, Millennium Cohort Study Linked Health Administrative Data, Scottish Medical Records, Scottish Birth Records 2002-2002, etc., etc. So this is just a small snippet. We have many more. Um, but just to illustrate what sort of data we are talking about here. And now how 
are we um, able to make those data which are highly sensitive uh, available? Before I come to that, I would like to quickly say something about the so-called data access spectrum. So here you can see that, so how, how to um, basically manage data access nationally. And uh, you can see the data access spectrum ranges from raw data or source data on the left-hand side to open data on the right-hand side. Um, we can also call them public use files. And then to the left, you can see safe that it would uh, be equivalent to scientific use files or control data to secure use files. These are our terms, controlled and safeguarded and open but um, also internationally, often you hear secure scientific and public use files. Now underneath you see the triangles in purple. And what these illustrate is that basically the more open your data are, um, the, the more control on the data detail you will need. So if you want to make your data available openly, you need to um, have high controls on your data detail. Um, just to illustrate that, we have, for example, safeguarded data sets and the, the um, best regional level you can get for that is a government office region. It's not any more detailed than that. Otherwise, it would move into the control data uh, section. So, and then when you move to the left, you can see you have less control on data details. So you have more detailed data, but then you need to actually impose um, access controls, stricter access controls in order to uh, mitigate that. Now, there the five safes framework comes in. And um, basically the five saves framework is a set of principles that the UK data service developed with the ONS and HMRC in 2017. And it enables data services to provide safe research access to data. Um, this framework has actually become best practice in data protection whilst fulfilling the demands of open science and transparency. So it has been adopted by many um, uh, secure labs across the UK recently. And it, it actually is a scheme that allows um, and provides approved researchers with controlled access to sensitive or confidential data enabling research here. Now, what is it? So basically the five safes refer to safe projects, safe people, safe settings, safe data and safe outputs. On the left-hand side, you can be the questions that you need to ask yourself in order to get there. So is this an appropriate use of the data for safe projects? How trustworthy are the researchers for the safe people? Does the environment prevent misuse for the safe setting? Is the data detail appropriate? Is it safe data or not safe data? Is there any confidentiality risk from publication? So basically, you need to have the right set of these different fives in order to enable safe use. And now um, I would like to introduce an animation showing that a little bit. Um, it starts off. Um, in, in a way that I will start it off, but this is what we also use in the safe researcher training, but I will explain everything. Have a look before we start on the left hand side. Um, there's a scale ranging from safe use to um, uh, unsafe use. And we start with open data. So imagine you have open data, then you can basically have unsafe projects in inverted commas, unsafe people, unsafe settings, because you have open data and you still have safe outputs. So even if a person would access the data in an internet cafe somewhere and um, these data are openly available, there is no project registration, there is no uh, researcher training going on beforehand, still the output will be safe because the data level, the detail is controlled this much, that much. Now, the different scenario is when um, when you have um, controlled data, so when you look at the orange scale, you have the uh, scale from open data down to controlled data. And now we're talking about controlled data, so secure lab data. In that case, you actually need safe projects, you need safe people, safe settings, and safe outputs in order to make these controlled data um, safely available. So that's, that's the meaning behind that. Now, to illustrate further how that works for the UKDS Secure Lab, for example. So as I said, there's no opportunity to download the data to your computer. You will have to access it remotely or you're allowed to even um, access it remotely because sometimes you, uh, you can also just uh, have a remote job um, a system like the IAB, for example. 
But here we are talking about re remote access. So you have access via a web-based interface that uses secure encrypted Citrix virtual private network technology. The data are accessed remotely and the outputs uh, are subject to statistical disclosure control performed by two members of staff. I don't know whether it is actually um, big enough for you to see this little graph. What it basically says is you identify the data, you register, you order the data, you become an approved researcher, you then have to complete the service agreement and you have to undergo training, you have to pass a test, you then receive your login. Once you have successfully passed the test, you can work remotely. And once you have produced your output, uh, you will then uh, submit it for an output check and once the statistical disclosure control has been performed, it will be released to you. So basically, this is an illustration of how we apply the five safe. So basically, um, the, we, we ensure that there are safe projects. So the research projects are approved by the data owners for public good. We ensure there are safe people. So the researchers are trained and authorized to use the data safely. Um, we have, have a safe setting with a secure lab. So the secure lab environment prevents unauthorized use. And we have safe outputs because we screen and approve outputs um, so that they are not disclosive. And this is a, a UKDS Secure Lab infrastructure. This is how it, how it looks. So basically, um, the Secure Lab environment is built around Citrix Xen Desktop and Citrix Netscaler, which serve up virtual desktops to external researchers via a secure encrypted SSL session. Additionally, we have um, restricted, it is restricted by user IP address. And architecturally, there are two uh, firewalls in place, two separate ones, as you can see here. That's the main UKDA perimeter firewall and the second internal firewall. So just to conclude, we provide remote access to control data for 10 years now um, that has started in the economic and social data service with a secure data service. And now it's the UK is data service secure now, but it has continued. And um, so we are operational for 10 years. Um, there was no legal breach within these 10 years. I'm very happy to say we have at the moment 938 active users. And um, we have also recently uh, made available safe home remote desktop access to international control data via our involvement in the International Data Access Network. And um, even more excited I am about um, the next point, which is that very soon we will have um, safe from remote desktop access to UK data service secure lab data from abroad and um, we are in, uh, in negotiations with the CLS and uh, Karen and Danielle are involved in that as well. So um, we will presumably make these data available first uh, abroad in, in a secure manner, which is very exciting news. And um, we are also here involved in, in shock. So um, in work package 5.4, remote access to sensitive data, and that will be also one of the outcomes. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, um, please fire away. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Beata. That was really interesting. I think that's really exciting news that you're sharing uh, about the safe room, uh, remote access. Thanks a lot.